Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Neuromania Club, and we are uh, we have started this initiative mainly for the neurology students, and also for the uh, students who are undergoing the MD medicine. So we will try to cover small small topics on a regular basic basis, and we will post the videos of the same. So if you like the video, then subscribe our channel for the more videos in the coming time. So today's topic is approach to vertigo and uh, this is part one we will take this topic in two parts so today we will uh, go through the approach so what is uh, dizziness dizziness is a uh, symptom used to describe a variety of common sensations that include vertigo lightheadedness faintness and imbalance so dizziness is a broad term and it may include these sensations like vertigo lightheadedness faintness and imbalance and what is vertigo it refers to a sense of spinning or other motion that may be physiological occurring during or after a sustained head rotation or pathological due to vestibular dysfunction so vertigo is a sense of spinning while dizziness may comprise four terms which are vertigo lightheadedness faintness or imbalance and vertigo may be physiological which occurs due to sustained head rotation when we uh, spin or we dance then sometimes we feel uh, vertigo which is we feel that sense of spinning which is physiological and the pathological vertigo may be due to the vestibular dysfunction next lightheadedness lightheadedness is classically next is uh, next term is lightheadedness lightheadedness is classically applied to presyncopal sensations uh, the sensation which occurs generally before syncopal attacks resulting from the brain hypoperfusion but as used by patient as little specificity as it may also refer to other symptoms such as disequilibrium or imbalance so lightheadedness is usually reported by patients in neuro opds but it has not that much significance but usually uh, it happens to the uh, patients who has suffered syncopal attacks okay so these are the terms read them properly the difference of all the terms now what is vestibular dizziness vestibular dizziness is the vertigo or imbalance may be due to peripheral disorders that affect the labyrinths or vestibular nerves or it may result from disruption of the central vestibular pathways so as the name indicates vestibular dizziness will involve the vestibular system so it is it may be due to the peripheral disorder which is are affecting the labyrinths or the vestibular nerves or it may be from the disruption of the central vestibular pathways next the acute unilateral lesions which causes vertigo the acute unilateral lesions okay it cause vertigo due to a sudden imbalance in vestibular inputs from the two labyrinths so and the bilateral lesions which cause imbalance and instability of vision when the head moves which is also known as oscillopsia due to loss of normal vestibular reflexes so the unilateral lesions may cause vertigo due to sudden imbalance in vestibular inputs from the two labyrinths the imbalance because uh, the lesion is in one side and the bilateral lesions may cause imbalance and instability of vision when the head moves due to loss of normal vestibular reflexes the presyncopal dizziness it occurs when cardiac dysrhythmia orthostatic hypotension medication effects on other cause which leads to the brain hypoperfusion so the name only indicates presyncopal that is which occurs before syncope other causes of dizziness may include the non vestibular imbalance the gait disorders example the loss of proprioception from the sensory neuropathy or parkinsonism and anxiety so these were the main causes of dizziness now when evaluating the patients with dizziness the questions which are to be considered it is important uh, when you are examining a patient or attending a patient in opd or emergency if the patient complains of dizziness what questions are to be asked the first one is these are to be asked to yourself to the person who is examining is it dangerous that is uh, is there any arrhythmia or it may be due to transit ischemic attack or stroke is it vestibular or if vestibular is it peripheral or central okay so these are the three important questions now here comes the approach to vertigo uh, it's a good uh, flow chart how you approach to a patient with vertigo so first the a point when a patient comes to you with a complaint of vertigo that is spinning swaying or tilting or dizziness you have to consider the question which is to be asked first is is it episodic or continuous means it is coming in brief episodes or the vertigo is continuous like a continuous rainfall okay so if it is episodic seconds to hours and continuous means hours to days now first we will consider the episodic verticos the episodic vertigo why the either they are triggered by the head movements if yes then we have to perform the dix halpike maneuver if the dix halpike maneuver comes positive then our diagnosis is bppv and if 
the it is a trigger it's not triggered by the head movements then further investigations are to be done uh, and further questions are to be asked like here is there any hearing loss is there any tinnitus is there any headache or any psychiatric issues so this was for episodic one now if the vertigo is now let's again come to the point if the vertigo is continuous that is it is present from hours to days then you have two uh, points like is there any medication side effect if the patient is on SSRIs or anticholinergics or antihypertensives or any aminoglycosides so it can be due to medicine side effect if no history of medicine or medication then you have to perform the hints versus MRI sub or and refer to the subspecialty like neurology or ENT so what hints means hints stands for head impulse nystagmus and test of skew so the interpretation how you will differentiate after doing this hints maneuver you will differentiate the uh, that the vertigo is peripheral or central so the peripheral vertigo the saccades are present in central there are no saccade in peripheral absent or unidirectional nystagmus in central the nystagmus is usually bidirectional or vertical and in peripheral no vertical eye deviation during the cover testing while in central there is vertical eye deviation during cover testing so peripheral may be due to vestibular neuritis or paralymphic fistula and central vertigo can be due to transient ischemic attacks stroke or multiple sclerosis so this is a good flow chart even in your exam if uh, the question comes approach to vertigo then you can draw this flow chart and it will fetch you good marks now next we comes to the examination of a patient who presents with dizziness or vertigo focus should be given to give assessment of eye movements vestibular functions and hearing the range of eye movements and whether they are equal in each eye should be observed properly next the peripheral eye movement disorders uh, which may be seen in cranial neuropathies or eye muscle weakness are usually disconjugate that is they are different in two eyes and one should check for pursuit what is pursuit pursuit is now these are important terms you should read them properly and try to understand them what is pursuit pursuit is the ability to follow a smoothly moving target like you uh, ask the patient to follow your finger and you just move the finger smoothly uh, so this is pursuit and what are saccades the ability to look back and forth accurately between the two targets now you uh, both you just uh, uh, keep a move both the fingers in front of a patient and you just ask them to look at on the both directions so the ability to look back and forth accurately between the two targets is saccades now poor pursuit or inaccurate that is dysmetric saccades uh, usually indicate central pathology which often involve the cerebellum the alignment of two eyes can be checked with a cover test what is to be done in the cover test while well, the patient is looking at a target alternately cover the eyes and observe for the corrective saccades a vertical misalignment may indicate a brain stem or cerebellar lesions and finally one should look for spontaneous nystagmus and involuntary back and forth movement of the eyes nystagmus is most often of jerk type uh, that is slow drift slow phase in one direction alternates with a uh rapid saccadic movement that is quick phase or fast phase in the opposite direction that resets the position of eye in the orbits so this is jerk type nystagmus except in the case of acute vestibulopathy that is vestibular neuritis if the primary position nystagmus is easily seen in the light it is possibly due to a central cause now there are two forms of nystagmus that are characteristic of lesion of the cerebellar pathways which are these two forms of nystagmus a vertical nystagmus with downward fast phase that is downbeat nystagmus and the horizontal nystagmus that changes direction with gaze that is gaze evoked nystagmus so these are the two forms of nystagmus that are characteristic of lesion of the cerebellar pathways and by contrast peripheral lesions typically cause unidirectional horizontal nystagmus so uh, this uh, nystagmus due to cerebral lesions can be of these two types and uh, the nystagmus due to the peripheral lesions typically cause unidirectional horizontal nystagmus okay now the two forms of nystagmus that are characteristic of lesion of cerebellar pathway we have already seen this now coming to the next slide what are frenzel eye glasses frenzel eye glasses are the self illuminating goggles with convex lenses that blur the patient's vision but allow the examiner to see the eyes greatly magnified or the infrared video goggles can be used which can aid in the detection of peripheral vestibular nystagmus because they reduce the patient's ability to use visual fixation to suppress nystagmus so what are the use of frenzel eye glasses they reduce the patient's ability to 
use visual fixation to suppress nystagmus so, so nystagmus can be better elicited with the use of the frenzel eye glasses or the infrared video goggles now the most useful bedside test of peripheral vestibular function is the head impulse test what is head impulse test head impulse test uh, the vestibular ocular reflex that is vor is assessed with small amplitude that is only 20 degree of uh, rapid head rotation is to be done you just hold the uh, head of the patient and while the patient fixates on a target the head is rotated quickly to the left or the right so just try to understand you are holding the patient's head just ask the patient to look on your nose and you just uh, rotate the head of the patient to the left and the right direction with the amplitude of only 20 degree during each head rotation so if the VOR that is vestibular ocular reflex is deficient the rotation is followed by a catch-up saccade in the opposite direction example if a leftward saccade then uh, a leftward saccade will be seen after a rightward rotation you rotate the patient's eye in the right side if the VOR is deficient if the patient's eye moves with the ro direct the rotation of the head then a corrective saccade that is the saccade in the opposite direction catch-up saccade will take place the head impulse test can identify both the unilateral and the bilateral vestibular hyperfunctions how what happens in unilateral the catch-up saccades after rotation is towards the weak side and in bilateral catch-up saccades after rotation is in the both direction so head impulse test will identify both unilateral as well as bilateral vestibular hyperfunction now to differentiate between peripheral vertigo and central vertigo the head impulse test this is hence head impulse test nystagmus and test of his cue so this hence maneuver will uh, help you to differentiate between peripheral and central vertigo how what happens in head impulse test in the peripheral vertigo the head impulse test is abnormal and the corrective saccade to midline with rotation of the head while in central vertigo the head impulse test is normal and no corrective saccade is seen then what happens to nystagmus in peripheral vertigo the nystagmus is unidirectional and horizontal in central vertigo the nystagmus is horizontal and direction is changing and or vertical or torsional any type of nystagmus can be seen test of skew no skew deviation in peripheral vertigo while skew deviation is present in central vertigo now this is how head impulse test is done uh, the patient is focused on examiner's nose after a sharp turn to patient's right patient remains focused on examiner nose so this is normal vestibular ocular reflex while if the patient is focused on the examiner nose you rotate the head towards the right side and the corrective saccades then occurs on the uh, left side so this is abnormal VOR so this is how head impulse test is done now patients with episodic dizziness if provoked by positional change should be tested with the dix pike maneuver now if a patient comes to you and complains of uh, uh, dizziness or episodic vertigo and if you take the proper history and history the patient says that whenever he or you know, she changes the position then only the vertigo occurs uh, especially while uh, during sleep changing the position or just uh, getting up from sleep if the vertigo takes place that time then you have to test the disc hull pack maneuver how what is to be done in this maneuver the patient begins in a sitting position with the head turned 45 degrees holding the back of the head the examiner then lowers the patient into supine position with the head extended backwards by about 20 degrees while watching the eyes okay so you just make a patient sit on a patient couch and then turn the head 45 degree right or left both you have to do like imagine first you have uh, rotating the head in the 45 degree right direction then holding the back of the head the examiner then lowers you have to lower the patient in the supine position with the head extended backwards the head is to be uh, outside of the uh, bed or couch and it, it has to be uh, extended backward by about 20 degrees and you have to see the motion the movement of the eyes okay uh, now in posterior canal PPPV that is benign positional vertigo can be diagnosed confidently if transient upbeating torsional nystagmus is seen in dix halpike maneuver. So what is seen in dix halpike? If transient upbeating torsional nystagmus is seen then posterior canal PPPV is confidently diagnosed. If no nystagmus is observed after 15 to 20 seconds the patient is raised to the sitting position and the procedure is repeated with the head turned to the other side. Okay. Now what is dynamic visual acuity? It is a functional test that can be useful in assessing the vestibular function. Visual acuity is measured with the head still, head still and when the head is rotated back and forth by the examiner about 1 to 2 hertz frequency. 
a drop in visual acuity during the head motion of more than one line on a near card or slant chart is normally is abnormal and indicates the vestibular dysfunction so this is dynamic visual acuity test pixel pack is more important so now the difference of peripheral and central vertigo here the onset is sudden in peripheral sudden or slow it can be sudden it can be slow in central the severity of vertigo it's intense spinning in peripheral while it's ill defined and less intense in central the pattern of peripheral vertigo it's paroxysmal or intermittent while central is constant aggravated by position movement in peripherals yes and in central it can be variable it can be aggravated by position of movement or it cannot may not so an associated nausea diaphoresis frequently seen in peripheral while less frequently seen in central nystagmus important it's rotatory vertical or horizontal nystagmus in peripheral or only vertical nystagmus is seen in central a fatigue of symptoms or signs is seen in peripheral and it's not seen in central because it's constant hearing loss or tinnitus may occur in peripheral while it does not occur in central abnormal tympanic membrane may seen in peripheral while it's normal in central and the central nervous system signs are absent in peripheral while it are us it's usually present in the central vertigo now coming to the investigations of a patient of dizziness or vertigo audiometry should be performed whenever a vestibular disorder is suspected unilateral sensory neural hearing loss supports a peripheral disorder example vestibular schwannomas predominantly low frequency hearing loss is seen in meniere's disease and video nystagmography includes recording of spontaneous nystagmus if present and measure and measurement of the potential positional nystagmus okay so now the caloric testing it compares the responses of the two horizontal semicircular canals while the video head impulse testing measures the integrity of each of the six semicircular canals the vestibular evoke potentials assess the otolith reflexes the test battery often includes over uh, this vertigo panel which is usually uh, known with the name of vertigo panel this is a test battery which often includes recording of the saccades and pursuits to evaluate the central ocular motor functions now neuroimaging is important if a central vestibular disorder is suspected patients so now it's not like that each patient to vertigo you will go with neuroimaging or mri brain so whatever we have uh, read in the previous slides in the approach to vertigo you should uh, see the patients with that approach and then if you suspect the central vestibular disorders then you should go with the neuroimaging now, patients with unexplained unilateral hearing loss or vestibular hyperfunction should undergo contrast mri of the internal auditory canals to rule out the schwannomas okay so whenever unilateral hearing loss or unilateral vestibular function is seen you have to suspect schwannoma so this was about the general approach to vertigo the uh, individual uh, diseases or illnesses we will uh, deal with them in the next lecture okay so thank you very much